Remember how we had nested if statements? That was an if statement within another if statement. And we talked about the different levels, level one ifs, level two ifs, level three ifs, it's all infinity. You can also put loops inside of loops, which are called nested loops. And those get tricky, however, they're very predictable once you know how Ruby processes them. So here is such an example. We have an outer loop, we call it a level one loop. No, no, I made up the term level one, but think of it as a level one loop. Most people call it an outer loop. Um, and <clears throat> we print five, so we're gonna end up printing five five times, right? But we also now introduce a loop in here. Now remember how Ruby pro knew when an if statement was within another if statement? That's every time Ruby hits an if before it hit an end that concluded that if, that means we move in a level. Here as well, if I remove the indentation, uh, Ruby would still know that this loop is an inner loop because we had this outer loop here do. We never hit the end yet and we're already introducing another loop. That means this loop becomes a level two loop, which means it's inside the first loop. So, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a couple options, and there's no way to know. It's completely arbitrary how the designers of Ruby made this. But what, here are the options of how Ruby processes this. One way is that Ruby will print five, five times, and then print 10, 10 times. Another way, alternative is that Ruby processes five, and then 10, 10 times, and then go back up to do five, and then 10 another time, and then five, and then 10 another time. Is there a third possible alternative of how Ruby processes this? I think it's gonna alternate five and 10, five, five, ten, ten, five ten. Ten, ten, ten. Oh, so, okay, so Cassandra's presenting an awesome third alternative, which is five, ten, five, ten, five, ten, five, ten, five, ten. We sort of exhausted the outer loop of five, so that now we just go 10 the rest of the way, a bunch of times, five more times. So let's just see. <laughs> it is the middle alternative, okay? And so Ruby works like this. And so do all programming languages that use a, that have nested loops. Um, I'm gonna use comments to indicate this. So Ruby hits this line first, then this line. I'm going to skip the blank line. Um, three, sorry, that's not a three. Three, four, five. Ruby always processes an inner loop fully before going back to the next round of the outer loop. That is the golden rule of nested loops. And you just have to write that on your forehead or anything on your forehead is the worst thing, because then you have to look in a mirror <laughs> to find it, and then it's backwards. Isn't that useful? Yeah. So right on your hand, maybe. Um, it always processes inner loops fully before going back to the next round of the outer loop. So that means Ruby's going to go 6, 7, 8. Oh, this is tedious to write all this. 9, 10, 11. You get the idea, right? 13, I'm just gonna always finish it. <laughs> 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Tell me when I hit 10. What is that, six? Ruby does this a lot faster than I do. Thank goodness. 31. 32, what do I have, two? That was 10? Yeah. Sweet, okay. And then, three, four, and then, <laughs> sorry, not far, I'm at 33, sorry. 33, 34, and then, 35, 36, I'm not gonna, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is that nuts? That's just, that's just how it is. Um, 
in my head, I'm so used to this that to me this seems logical. What I realize it could, it's sort of arbitrary, but the way I look at it is like, okay, Ruby says, outer loop, five times do the following. For five times, I want you to do a loop 10, ten times. times. Doing this, yeah. Right, so in time number one, we're doing a loop of 10 times. Time number two, we're doing an inner loop of 10 times. Time, does that make sense? That's, or here's one number the rule. Ruby always processes the inner loop before it goes back to the next round of the outer loop. 